Coming up on the show, Mississippi makes national headlines with their possible plans to remove three public universities by 2028. A tragedy took place in front of the Israel Embassy in Washington, D.C. All of this and more. SMTV, February the 28th, Wednesday, starts right now. television studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi. This is SMTV News, news you can use. Hello, USM, and thank you for joining us for another episode of SMTV. I am Amaya Norman. And it's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Beth L. Miles. Here's our top news stories for today. In a recent development, Mississippi Senator John Polk has introduced a bill that could lead to the closure of three state-funded universities by June 30th of 2028. While the specific universities haven't yet been identified, the Institutions of Higher Learning's Board of Trustees would select them based on factors like enrollment data, degrees offered, and economic impact. The bill mandates the board to report their decision to lawmakers by June 30th of 2025. With over 77,000 students enrolled across nine public universities, those with the lowest enrollment, such as Delta State University, Mississippi University for Women, and Mississippi Valley State University could be at risk. The closures, if the closures occur, the bill proposing selling or gifting of the university's assets, this development sparks concerns about the future of higher education in Mississippi. In a tragic turn of even 25-year-old Air Force Airman, Bushnell from San Antonio lost his life in an extreme act of protest on Sunday. Bushnell set, him, set himself on fire outside the Israel Embassy in Washington, D.C., expressing deep frustration over the israel Amas war. We, he live-streamed lighting himself on fire on Twitch. In the video, he can be heard saying, I will no longer be complicit in genocide, and repeatedly yelled, Free Palestine. The incident unfolded just before 1 p.m., with authorities confirming that Bushnell was on active duty status at the time. The Metro Palestine Police Department identified him and the Air Force verified his active duty status. The motive behind the drastic protests remain under investigation, shedding light on the profound impact global conflict can have on individuals. Beta Alpha Psi, an accounting honor society at Southern Miss, hosted Keller Stoner. Stoner is a senior consultant at Deloitte, which provides industry-leading auditing, consulting, tax, and advisory services. In the meeting, Stoner talked about different career paths that an accountant major could take, such as assessment and financial advisory, among many other things as well. He emphasized ESG stands for Environmental social and governance responsibility. Stoner talked about how accounting could transfer to ESG and about the different responsibilities that could come with ESG. He also talked about the future of ESG, data management, and what a career in ESG would look like. Having a former Beta Alpha Psi member and Southern Miss alumni, Kyle Stoner, share about the work that he does in the ESG space Sure student success, Beta Alpha Psi also hosted a mentor and mentee event at the end of the meeting where people who are not as experienced in the field could gather and gain advice and experience from people who were more advanced in the field. Each person at the event had to find the other person to their pair and they would meet up and talk from there. The Theta Eta chapter of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated hosted their annual Miss Theta Eta pageant. The Miss Theta Eta Scholarship Pageant was held in Joe Paul Theater, where many young women competed for the crown. The theme of the pageant was Fifty Shades of Her, which focused on individuality, uniqueness, and bold expressions. The contestant of the pageant had to go through three different categories, such as a presentation category, a personal expression piece category, and a fun fashion category. Towards the end of the pageant, contestants had to wear a formal evening gown and were interviewed to see who would be crowned Miss Theta Eta. The lady who went home with this year Miss Theta Eta scholarship was Ayana A. Moss. 
If you would like to be on the lookout for events and more, follow the five Beta Sigma fraternity on their Instagram at USM Sigmas. In more Greek news, the IOTA Kappa chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated hosted an event in honor of Black History Month. This year's event was called Essence of Black, and it took place in the usual Union Room G. The chapter annually puts this together for the black community here at Southern Miss so they can learn more about their history, cultures, and discuss certain topics that students experience while being here at a predominantly white institution. They also partnered with the African Towns Food Bank, which collects non-perishable items such as jars of peanut butter, canned pastas, canned soups, crackers, and more. The food bank then sends out the products to people in need. The event featured discussions on various topics such as hairstyles, code switching, colorism, and media representation within the African American community. If you would like to know more about upcoming events, you can follow the chapter on their Instagram page at iota kappa underscore 1908. Next, we have a spe special interview from SM2's own radio show, Southern Miss Today. This week's interview featured the Director of Fraternity and Sorority Life. Now let's please give a warm Golden Eagle welcome to Laura Laughlin. Hey Laura, so nice having you here joining us today. Hey Emily, thanks for having me. I'm excited. So, you're the Director of Sorority and Fraternity Life here at Southern Mississippi? That's right, yes. I um, started, uh, I worked here for a few years, but I started in the Director of Fraternity and Sorority Life role full-time in the start of 2021. So, for those of us who aren't familiar with fraternities and sororities, can you tell the audience, like, what the roles are on the campus of USM? Yeah. So fraternities and sororities, uh, you know, a simplified version is it's a student organization on college campuses across the country. Um, and uh, it, uh, they are student organizations that exist to help students get engaged at their college or institution. And that's, of course, uh, the value we see in them at Southern Miss. And then, you know, I think the, uh, the broader goal of fraternities and sororities is to connect um, members across generations. So you think that's sort of one thing that sets fraternities and sororities apart from another club is that members are connected to people who have been members for uh, decades. Um, and so there's a, a thread of connection between alum and current students. And um, I think that's kind of what makes sororities and fraternities special. And then I think, you know, when done well, they impact the community positively and they impact members positively. So I think that that's part of what draws members in. Is there any upcoming events that were not listed? And for those of who have questions over the events, how can they, how can you be contacted? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I wanna highlight a couple of events. I mean, there are a ton, you know, I, as I said, we have 26 chapters, three governing councils. If you go to our website, you'll see we have a FSL overall calendar that lists all of those like chapter and council specific events. But we have two, a couple big events that are coming up this semester that really aren't just specific to fraternity and sorority life. Um, but I, I know my fraternity and sorority community will play a big part in making them successful. So a couple um, are uh, Founders Week. So Southern Miss has uh, really fun plans for what's called Eagle Fest, which is like a spring homecoming event that goes into Founders Week. So there will be lots of good events that are for students to celebrate the institution um, the last week of March. So I want people to keep uh, an eye out for anything that's called Eagle Fest or Founders Week. Um, it's the week uh, prior to the Good Friday and Easter holiday, so people can keep an eye out for that. And then an event that we're bringing back this year that's been kind of dormant for a couple of years is the big event. It's at the end of April. It's on Saturday, April the 27th. Um, again, open to everybody, not just students and fraternities and sororities, but will be a morning of service in the Hattiesburg community. So we have lots of uh, community partners from the Salvation Army to uh, um, extra table to the Red Cross, lots of local um, groups of uh, philanthropic national efforts to help uh, bolster the Hattiesburg community and support some of their efforts in town. So anybody that wants to sign up, any student that wants to sign up to serve that morning, um, it's going to be a really great event. Uh, we'll have hopefully uh, opportunity for three or 400 students to go onto the Hattiesburg community and do service that morning. So keep an eye out. We're hoping registration opens for that in the next couple of weeks. So the big event, Saturday, April the 27th. 
And so for those who are curious mm-hmm. and or interested in joining Fraternity and Story Life, mm-hmm. how can you be contacted? I mean, a, n- a number of ways. Email me, laura.laughlin at usm.edu. I mentioned our website, um, usm.edu slash Fraternity and Story Life. If you go on there, you'll see all of my staff's contact information. There's a link to a form that anybody could re- could fill out and tell us they're interested in joining, and we'll we'll respond back to them today or tomorrow because we want to make sure people get plugged into the right community and get the information they need to be able to know how to do that. So website, email, follow me on Instagram, send me a carrier pigeon, whatever it takes. Uh, we want to make sure that we get students connected to the experience. Well, thank you so much for joining me here today and giving us a rundown of FSL here at Southern Miss. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. And um, anyone's welcome to holler at me and um, we'll get you connected. What a great story by Southern Miss today. Hey, don't go anywhere. Stay tuned for our flash news briefing. And because this is the last episode in Black History Month, We again went out and quizzed some of your fellow students on black history. Which president freed the slaves? Abraham Lincoln. Okay, there we go. All right, I got this. Abraham Lincoln. What amendment freed the slaves? Uh, I want to say 13. 12. All right, all right, all right. You're getting close. You're getting close. There you go. Who is this historical black lady? That's Madam C.J. Walker. Okay! Now, if I'm not wrong, that looks like the lady who she made a lot of hair products and she made a lot of money. It is? But right. I, it is. What's her name? What's her name? Oh my goodness. We gonna call her Marcella Washington. Who is this historical black figure? Frederick. Frederick who? Douglas. <laughs> Frederick Douglass. That's uh uh. Frederick Douglass. She told you. <laughs> Give me a hint. What to start with? L. F. Girl, I don't know. I just told you I didn't know pictures. He said something about a name. This is Frederick Douglass. Who is this historical black lady? What does she do? She is a poet, an actress, a philanthropist. She is everything. Civil rights activist. She's everything. Dang. I think it starts with an M. An M? Mm-hmm. It ain't no Martha. It's like a. It ain't Martha. It ain't Martha. It ain't Martha. It ain't, it ain't Martha. dang. Do we start with an M? It do. Maya Angela? Yes! yes. Just leaving the house was hard. A Wounded Warrior Project helps you realize it's possible to get out there. To feel a sense of camaraderie again. To find the tools to live life better. Through generous community support, we've connected warriors and their families with no cost physical and mental health services, legislative advocacy, career assistance, and life skill training for 20 years. And we're just getting started. Welcome back. Here's your Flash News Briefing. Wesley Pepin's death. For local news, on Saturday, February 24th, a student from Meridian Community College passed away. Wesley Pippins was a sophomore at Meridian Community College and was a part of the college golf team. He lost his life tragically during a car accident in Meridian, Mississippi. Family, family and friends who were close with Wesley remember him as a beacon of kindness. His dedication to his studies and his sports made him a memorable person across his campus. Wesley made a big impact across campus by balancing his passion for golf and his commitment to the community. Wesley's untimely death is a reminder to everyone in the community just how fragile life really is. Now in more sad news, National Guard helicopter crashed in Mississippi's own backyard. Two National Guardsmen died in a helicopter crash last Friday. On February the 23rd, Officers Brian Andrew Zemick and Derek Joshua Abbott 
were killed when their helicopter crash landed in Prentice County. The two men were flying a normal routine flight when the AH-64 Apache crashed. The incident is still undergoing investigation, but Greg Sparks, a Prentice County medical examiner and coroner, put together a procession in honor of the two lost officers. In a tragic incident at Owa Owasso High School, a 16-year-old non-binary student, Nix Benedicts, lost their life following a restroom altercation on February 7th. The family alleged that the team faced harassment due to their non-binary identity. Although Nix walked out of the bathroom after the fight, they were taken to the hospital by their family that night. The next day, paramedics were called to their homes and Nix was rushed to the ER, where they later passed away. The altercation involved three older girls' school official claims. Each student walked to the assistant principal and nurse office independently after the fight. The police were not notified until Nix arrived at the hospital, sparking questions about the handling of the incident and the communication with the school. Unfortunately, Amaya, it's been a lot of sad news, a lot of homicides mm -hmm. and deaths going on right in Mississippi's backyard here. It really has. It's really sad to hear about those things. And lately, also, the weather. The weather has been up and down lately, causing a lot of people's sinuses to even act up more. Yeah, 100%. It was actually a little gloomy today. I wasn't expecting mm -hmm. that. So, wasn't expecting. hopefully we got some better news coming up right now in weather. Hi, I am Carlton Love and welcome to your SMTV weather. For Thursday's forecast, there will be a high of 62 and a low of 48. It will also be mainly cloudy on Thursday. Let's move into our five-day forecast. This week's highest temperatures will all be above 65. Friday's highest temperature will be 68 degrees and the lowest will be 57 degrees. It will be raining all day Friday. There will also be thunderstorms on Friday. Saturday is going to have a high of 75 and a low of 58. There will be scattered thunderstorms throughout all of Saturday. On Sunday, there will be a high of 75 and low of 60 with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms. To wrap up our five-day forecast, Monday will round us out with a high of 76 and a low of 59. Monday will also have mixed clouds and sun with scattered thunderstorms. Let's move into our rain chances for this week. You will definitely want your rain boots and an umbrella these next few days. Thursday will start us off with a rain chance of 12%. Then Friday's rain chance will jump to 92%. So there will certainly be rain on Friday. Saturday's rain chance will drop down to 64. Sunday has a rain chance of 50%. Lastly, Monday has a rain chance of 58%. And that is the end of your SMTV weather report. Stay informed, stay prepared. Whether rain or shine, be with the wise. I'm Carson Love, and thank you for joining me for your SMTV weather. See you next time, Southern Miss. Looks like we might have a couple showers this weekend. Nevertheless, it's better than these gloomy days that we've been having lately. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Carlton. Hey, don't go anywhere. We still have SM2 Sports and Community Calendar left in the show. Sit that hiney down. SMTV will be right back. <laughs> Many are forced to choose between food and other necessities. I'm stuck between paying for medications or paying for food. John from Maine. After rent and power, I can get groceries. It's sad to say food comes last. Anna from Texas. The Feeding America network of food banks helps provide over six billion meals to people in need each year. I thought pantries were for less fortunate people, but anybody could be less fortunate in a day or even a second. Claire from Virginia. Now I can provide food for my family again. It's not a handout, it's a hand up. Liam from Ohio. No one should have to worry where their next meal will come from. Together, we can end hunger. Learn more at feedingamerica.org.
Welcome back to your SN2 Sports Recap. I'm Amari Anderson and we have a full and exciting recap for you this week, so be sure to stay by your screen so you can hear all things Eagle Sports. First up, the Lady Eagles are now 16-11 after splitting their weekend games 1-1 as they lost in a nail-biter 57-52 against the ULM Warhawks. The Lady Eagles went on to redeem themselves Saturday against the Red Wolves of Arkansas State, winning 70-59. Dominique Davis led the team with 19 points to seal the deal. The women will be back in action this Friday at 5 p.m. as they travel to Louisiana to take on the Raging Cajun in their last regular season game. Going over to men's basketball, the team is 16-13 after going 1-1 one one over the weekend stretch. On Thursday, the Eagles could not get away from the South Alabama curse as the Eagles lost 83-64. The Eagles were sure to redeem themselves Saturday as they beat the Louisiana Raging Cajun 82-71 to close out their season at the Reed Green Coliseum. The men will be back in action Friday at 7 p.m. as they travel to Louisiana to face off with the Raging Cajun to close out their regular season play. Heading over to the peak, the Golden Eagles are now 6-2 after going 2-1 over the weekend against Missouri State. Baseball will be back in action this weekend in a three-game series against Indiana State starting Friday, March 1st at 6 p.m., so stay tuned for that. Going over to the track side, Southern Miss Track participated in the Sun Belt Conference Championship this past week. Multiple Golden Eagles placed at the conference championship. First, we have Zane Palomino, who won first jump place in the high jump. Palomino jumped 2.20 meters, which is his personal best. Next, we have Trinity Benson. She had herself a day with finishing first in the 60 meter with a time of 7.38 seconds and third place in the 400 meter dash with a time of 55.63 seconds. She also placed third overall in the conference. Kingsley Unorji came out on top in a landslide in the 60 meter dash with a time of 6.70 seconds. Kevin Chico came in second in the men's 800-meter dash. Zaysia Frazier came in the second place in the triple jump with a time of 12.95 meters. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. This week's Player of the Week goes to Zane Palomino, who won first place in the high jump. Palomino jumped 2.23 meters, which is also his personal best. That's all for this week, folks. Make sure to catch up back next Wednesday for a recap of the Golden Eagles. Peace, y'all. Thank you, Amari, for that wonderful information on sports. But, but uh, what is going on in the, in the community that you heard of? I'm not hearing too much about a lot. I am hearing about this IME closure. It's got students in somewhat of an uproar. What about you? I haven't heard much. But you know what? who can tell us about that information? Kennedy Drake's. Let's go over to Kennedy Drake's for Community Calendar. Hey Golden Eagles, my name is Kennedy Drake and I'm here with the Community Calendar where we gather information from around campus and within the community near you in Hattiesburg. Get your tickets for the Dance Gala Concert Come to Thomas V. Frochillo Stage at Minoni Performing Arts Center for an evening of dance. The event will take place March 1st and 2nd at 7 p.m. At USM, we celebrate many dance genres and the community it brings. Come see our students for a captivating performance. The same week, Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated and Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated will be hosting the Doves Declassified Blue White Survival Guide Week. The fun begins with a blue-white picnic on March 1st at 2 p.m. in NPHC Park. On March 2nd, the Osceola McCarty Service Day will begin at 9 a.m. in Osceola McCarty YDC. Lastly, on March 3rd, come to church at West Point at 10 a.m. Everyone is invited to come and experience the chance to meet individuals in fraternity and sorority life, as well as learn some meaningful history. Showcase your creative talents during the open mic at the Author Shop on March 7th at 7 p.m. The stage is open to all forms of family-friendly artistic expression. Bring your poems, stories, songs, comedy, and more. The event will continue until May 16th, 
For other upcoming dates, visit the website downtownhattiesburg.com. If you have an event you would like for us to promote, send it to sm2news at usm.edu. This is just one way we thank our community for watching Southern Miss TV and supporting us here at Southern Miss Student Media Center. Visit our website, sm2media.com, to keep up with all of our news. Signing out, I'm Kennedy Drake, and this has been your Community Calendar. Stay blessed and happy Black History Month! Do you like The Voice? If not, hopefully you will now. Congratulations to USM alumni Karen Wardrop. She is on the 25th season of NBC The Voice. Wardrop recently released her new album title, Kendall County Road, produced by Grammar Award winning producer Paul Worley and Beat Watson. The album includes a song written with Jim Martin, a feature with Wendy Moulton, on Nothing Is Impossible and the title track Ken Kendall Con County Road, which reminisces about missing home and family. Carrie Wardrobe graduated from USM with a degree in marketing. Be sure to catch her on The Voice every Monday and Tuesday at 8, 7 central. Now, the SAG Awards, the 30th Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards, also known as the SAG Awards, was held on Saturday, February the 24th, the award ceremony took place at the Shrine Auditorium in Expo Hall in Los Angeles. The ceremony celebrated both television and film stars that were chosen by their peers with the Acting Guild. Here are a few of the winners. Oppenheimer, the film based on the biography American Prometheus, won the award for outstanding performance by a cast in a motion picture. The award for outstanding performance by a female actor in a leading role went to Lily Gladstone for her performance in Killers of the Flower Moon. The winner of the award for outstanding male performance in a leading role was Celine Murphy for his acting in the film Oppenheimer. This was just a brief overview of a few of the winners. And if you would like to see all of the winners in their awards, you can go to time.com slash SAG awards. Now, on to our box office hits. Welcome back. Here's your SMTV Cinema. For today's segments, we'll be discussing the Michael Jackson biopic planned to be released on April 18th in 2025. The film is being directed by Antoine Fuquay and produced by Oscar winner Graham King. The film name is as straightforward as can be, Michael. The cast for the film currently consists of Coleman Domingo, Neil Long, and Miles Teller. The Jackson 5 will be played by Jamal R. Henson, Trey Horter, Ryan Hill, Joseph David Jones, and Jafar Jackson. The King of Pop's own nephew will be playing the role of Prince himself. Oscar nominee John Logan was the scriptwriter for the biopic. Universal Pictures Uni International will be distributing the film in international territories apart from Japan. Lionsgate will be handling the distribution domestically and within Japan. So. That's all for SMTV Cinema. Until our next screening. It's been a long week. Thank you all so much for watching SMTV. Make sure to visit our social media pages, like, follow, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Southern Miss Student Media. If you would like to submit a news tip, email us at sm2news at usm.edu. Also, if you would like to advertise with SM2 Media, please reach out to Josh Wilson at josh.wilson at usm.edu. You can find all of these stories and more on our website, sm2media.com. That's it for SMTV. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you on our next show. Always remember Southern Miss to the top. <laughs>